Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a food photography and food styling type of video and take you through the process of how I develop my recipes, which go on my Instagram and my blog. Um, so yeah, the making of those, how I style my food and the things that I use to sort of craft a photo, the camera gear that I use to do that and how I edit them as well using um, Lightroom. So yes, yeah, so let's get into it. So we're going to be doing a raw caramel slice today and this is a recipe this is going to be like my fifth revision of trying this recipe when making a recipe that's going to go on the blog i always like to play around with it and just make it as perfect as possible um and yeah sometimes with dessert recipes there is a lot of room for error and things just don't work out the way you want them to so yeah the first time i did this the um the chocolate was way too hard on the top so when i went to cut through it the caramel layer underneath just went splat from underneath it. The second time, I think the base was way too crumbly. And then the other two times I've done it, the caramel layer has had a really nice flavor in everything, but because it was so runny, every time you cut it, it would just like kind of ooze everywhere and just be a bit of a mess. And I just want a really clean cut caramel slice. So I've kind of played with the recipe again. So hopefully this version is going to be the one. Um, I will put the final one up on my vlogs. So we'll just see how it goes today. It might just be another play around. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go. Okay, we're gonna start with the base. So we are going to go one cup of almond meal. And I've got a food processor here. I'm just gonna add that onto the bottom. And then we're gonna go half a cup of oats. thinking this may not be the best angle for you. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, we'll go half a cup of protein powder. So I've got the 180 Nutrition Vegan Chocolate Protein Power here. Chocolate protein Power, well, powder. Um, this one is my absolute favorite. So I'm just gonna measure out half a cup of this one. Gonna go for some almond butter. And we're going to do two tablespoons of this one. Stir up the natural oils. All right. Yeah, I do pretty decent tablespoons too. So and two and nut butter in bases is just so good to combine everything together. It's kind of a good replacement for things like condensed milk that you would usually use. And then. Get one tablespoon of coconut oil, and this just really helps it to not be sticky in your fingers. And then to get it moving, I'm gonna add some uh, almond or oat milk, any plant-based milk that you have on hand. Start small because I have added too much in the past and I have to like add in a whole heap of dry ingredients to balance it back out. So I'm just gonna start small with um, 50 ml. And yeah, start with that, see how that blends. Might need a little bit of help getting around because ideally what I want this to do is to like come all together in a big thick dough. So I'm gonna add another 50 ml of almond milk so then it becomes 100 ml all together. it will stay together. So now I've just got a very small baking dish, roughly that size. These are Kmart ones and they're so good and they're very cute. Awesome, and that's a really good consistency because it's all come together really firmly and it's not all stuck to my hands. So that's the coconut oil at work there. That is what we've got. So I'm just going to place that into the freezer now and leave that for a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, we are moving on to the star of the show now, which is the caramel. 
and also the hardest part. So hopefully this doesn't go all wrong. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go for half a cup of almond butter. And then I'm gonna do quarter cup of tahini. So in a traditional caramel slice, I'm pretty sure it's the combination of the brown sugar and butter that really creates that caramel flavor. But in this case, it's going to be the combination of tahini with, which is a sesame seed paste, if you've never used it before. Um, so yeah, tahini combined with maple syrup is, gonna, is what's going to give us that caramel flavor. So it's gonna have all the healthy fats in this one. I'm gonna do quarter cup of maple syrup. Scooping that one on in. Two tablespoons of coconut oil again. Then we'll do a teaspoon of vanilla essence. And a few cracks of pink salt. Alright, let's see how that goes. going to go everywhere and make a mess hopefully so that when it's refrigerated it will start it will stay in a really nice shape so I did have a note in here to use dates in this layer if it wasn't getting thick enough um, because in the past I used dates but I soaked them in water and I think it was the water in here that made them that made the this layer really, really runny um, but this time I've gone for a higher um, nut butter ratio which is working pretty well so yeah in healthy baking um, if you're trying to do things like more refined sugar free dates are another great thing that you can use for sweetness but they also have like a really nice caramel flavor too um, but because they are high in fructose I'm a bit sensitive to foods that are high in fructose, so just give me a few digestive issues. So I prefer to avoid using them where I can. Um, so yeah, this will actually be a pretty good FODMAP friendly recipe. Um, FODMAPs is the recommended diet for those who are sensitive to fructose, um, to have all those fruits and vegetables that are high in fructose sort of removed because you have a certain threshold where, uh, a certain threshold of sensitivity. Um, so yeah, tahini is another one of those things that is quite high in fructose, but because it's got quite a small amount in this, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. All right, so that's all pressed in now like that. And I'm just going to put that into the freezer to get it all solid. So I've just put the slice into the freezer for half an hour at this point. So I'm just gonna get started on the chocolate layer. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge the stain that I just got on my beautiful periwinkle jumper and this is why I can't have nice things. So I'm just going to break up this block. I've got a linked 70% and I've got this heat on pretty, pretty low because you don't want to burn it, you do want to do it pretty slowly. If you want to make this recipe completely sugar or dairy free, um, that comes down to the brand of chocolate that you use. So you can use a dairy free one or a completely natural sugar free one if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I've just gone with the linked one. Okay, and that is melted down. So to avoid it going really, really hard when I put it back in the fridge, I am going to add a tablespoon of coconut oil. And this is just going to keep it kind of soft so that when you slice through it, it doesn't crack or anything like that. There is a bit of a misconception in healthy cooking that coconut oil is a healthy ingredient. So coconut oil is actually pretty much saturated fat, which is one of our bad fats. Um, so saturated fat, it is a fat that is required by the body. So it is an essential nutrient, but there is a certain threshold where too much becomes unhealthy. So still healthy in um, small amounts, but can very quickly become unhealthy if you're eating an excessive amount. So go easy on this. I only really use this in baking and I only add like a tablespoon or two here and there. 
um, I don't like add cups of it and things like that so yeah just something to be mindful of when doing that you could also use and that's the thing like when you're baking something that's sweet it's a bit weird to use olive oil and stuff like that even though olive oil is a um, monounsaturated fat so it is one of our good ones that's a good one to use it's the flavor of it would be a little bit weird but you can also use things like avocado oil that would be a really good one to use as well if you did want to keep it really really healthy um, but yeah just something to be mindful of so i just got that back out of the freezer and i'm just going to add the chocolate layer on top so this one's going to go back in the freezer now all right so now it's time to do all the washing up the worst part and I'm just gonna leave that in the freezer for two to three hours. And when I come back, we can chat about food photography and food styling. Okay, so it's a couple of hours later and I have since trained and done some work, hence the outfit change. So I'm just gonna go check on it. I've just taken it out of the fridge. So I'm gonna have a look at what it's looking like. I'm gonna have a look at what the side is looking like. I was a little bit impatient and I did try and cut through. I think the chocolate isn't soft enough and that's why it's cracked, but it cut through really, really well. There are three solid layers there. So I'm stoked with that. Oh, hey. Uh, this one for me. Okay. Being brutally honest. Do you like it? Mm. Yeah? Yeah, really good. You had crummy and then you had sloshy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got perfect. Yeah, it takes a lot of trial and error for some things. Like, it, yeah, most of the time things aren't perfect straight away. And then there are plenty of things that I've attempted that haven't even, like, made it through. I've just, like, canned them because they've gotten too hard. Um, but, yeah, I'm quite happy with this one. So let's chat about the camera gear while we're waiting for that to... I just want the chocolate to soften a little bit more so that it doesn't like cut or rough and get cracked. I just want it to be like a nice clean cut so we can get some really nice photos of it. This camera here, the Sony A7R3, yeah. is what we predominantly use for video and it's actually Dylan's camera, I just use it a lot. Um, and he upgraded to this one for because he is really into his photography. So this is the other camera that we have, which is the Sony A6000. Um, so this is the original camera that we bought at the start of the year in January because we wanted to go to Thailand in like June or July. So we bought it way in advance because we wanted to get really good at using it because yeah, we had never like had cameras like this with like full on settings and having to do things manually. So we just wanted to have plenty of time to get really good at using it. And then yeah, that yeah everything that happens that we didn't end up going and we've used these in a completely different way to what we originally envisioned which has been cool actually this one for photography and then i've got a 50 50 millimeter one point 50 8. yeah i said milliliter before and you said that's water no millimeter not milliliter that is water <laughs> okay okay cool 50 millimeter lens because it's better for the quality the closer the better is that right um sort of the 50 mil is like further away you have to stand further away than the 24 millimeter and the like further out lenses um sort of compresses the image and can get you a different look which is good for like food portraits and different sort of things like that Hmm. Yeah. I'm glad that you're here because I would not have been able to <laughs> explain it like that. All the gear and no idea for me. Yeah, so that's pretty much it in the way of camera gear. Um, I've got a couple of different bits and pieces that I like to style my food with. So a couple of different um, plates and things like that and cutlery and things. So I'll show you all that and how I'm going to set up this shot to do this photography. Mm -hmm. So I'll chat about a couple of the pieces that I use a lot when I'm doing my food photography. First thing is these napkins. These literally cost me $2 from Kmart and they're just, I have them in pink and white and they're just really nice just to chuck down on the surfaces, put your plates and stuff on top, just to add a bit of texture and color to the photo. So I really like using them all the time. Um, I have a couple of funky different pieces of cutlery in here. These ones, these are from the Wholesome store. This is a tool set and this is another fave. 
I got this one from Bali. It's rusting a little bit. That's really cute to use too. And just some basic gold spoons that I got for Christmas. Yeah, they're just really cool additions to food photos and stuff like that. I also have a couple of plates that I picked up here and there. And these have literally come from like Kmart and this was from, this one was a $2 store one, um, a nice speckled plate. And then all these ones have been Kmart and Target, so super affordable. But I try to avoid eating on them too much, which probably sounds like dumb to like have a plate and then not use it. But because when you use it too much, you get all like the scratches on it and things like that. And I just rather like save them so that they look really nice for food photos and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much like the main pieces that I use. Okay, so I like to come out here and set up at this little corner for my food photography. It's really good because I've got the two windows with lots of natural light. So I literally just drag the table over and set up here. In a perfect world, I would love to do this in the morning because the morning light is on this side of the house and it's just, um, nicer to get that early morning light for your food photography you don't want anything that's like too direct you just sort of want the space to be full of natural light and also for it to be a bit of a clearer day because it's a bit miserable out here today which is fine but we'll just work with it um yeah so i'm just going to get this area set up a minute until midnight i'm just wondering where you at just thought i'd call and wish you good night Okay, I'll just talk about the settings quickly. Good to know if you're really interested in photography and everything. So I've got the ISO, which is pretty much like the brightness on 320. The aperture is on 2.8 and the shutter speed is on 1 over 100. Am I going to say what we had? Would you come on over? Don't you miss me too? Give it all you got, babe. Give it all you got, baby. I'd rather try than lose you. Give it all you got, baby. Give me all you got. So it's the next day now and I'm just going to go ahead and look at the photos from yesterday. So I'll just get all that set up on the computer and I'll show you how I sort of edit them and fix them up a little bit on Lightroom. So I do have a Lightroom app on my phone, which is usually, it's a little bit easier because I don't have to like constantly transfer photos between devices. But um, there is the Lightroom desktop version, which I thought I would use to show you guys today. Um, because the screen is just bigger and you'll probably be able to see it easier than you would on a phone. And just the quality can sometimes be better instead of like transferring images and stuff if you're able to transfer the raw file straight onto Lightroom. So I'm just connecting the SD card into the um, USB. Here I'm just loading up Lightroom. So Lightroom is a program that requires a subscription and it's $15 per month, but for me, I get so much use out of it, so it's completely worth it. So here I'm just importing the photos from the SD card onto the laptop. Once they've imported, I go develop, and this is where I go through and select all the ones that I definitely don't want to use so that I just remove them from the device completely and then shortlist the ones that I do want to fix up and edit to potentially use. 
So I do use Lightroom presets on these photos. So the ones, so Dylan and I both invested in the preset bundle, which is where a bunch of different creators come together and basically put all their presets in a bundle for a discounted price. So we jumped on that and we get so much use out of them. So my go-to ones for food photography are um, by Elsa's Wholesome Life and her ones are specifically developed for food. So I go through and I play with the settings and get it to, cause you do, it does put on a basic filter, but then you do have to adjust the different settings depending on your lighting and contrast and all the rest of it. And once I'm happy with um, the settings that I've adjusted, I just copy and then I just paste them onto all the different photos, which as you can see, I am doing here because most of the time, once you have the settings that suit one photo, they will usually be suitable for the rest of them um, and only small adjustments are really required. So once I'm happy with a photo, I will save it to the computer and then airdrop it. And that is pretty much all there is to it. So that's my whole process on it developing recipes, taking photos, editing them. And from here, I'll go and make a blog post so I can upload this recipe to my blog, which should be available I'm not sure if this will be up before that or if that will, probably the blog. Um, but yeah, I just really hope you enjoyed watching this whole process. I forgot to touch on earlier yesterday um, that I do make recipes for 180 Nutrition, which is the company of protein powder that I use every day. And that's not a paid role or anything for me. Um, I do have a discount code if you want to use it, which gives you 10% off, um, but that's not an affiliate or anything. It's really just 10% off your cart at the end if you would like to. Um, yeah. I just really enjoyed the whole creative process. I wish that I had more time to do things like this. It's a bit of a luxury and I haven't been able to experiment with, experiment with the recipe in such a long time. Yeah, I just really enjoy um, creating new recipes, putting healthy spins on all this fun stuff and just thinking of new ways to use protein powder. Protein powder is so incredibly versatile and I just prefer to cook with it so much more than put it in a shake and things like that. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did like it, make sure you leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I will see you in the next one. See you later.